This is the new Dodge Charger. It's a two-door electric muscle car that goes on sale this year. But wait, I got a lot more to say than that. It also comes with a four-door option, and next year the Charger is also getting an engine if you prefer it that way. That's a lot of information. Trust me, you are not alone. So let's walk through this together and find out what the hell is happening at Dodge. So here we go, the 2024 Dodge Charger. It's gonna go on sale this year exclusively as an electric vehicle. And then next year, they'll roll out a Charger equipped with an inline six engine. Now we had a huge presentation on this car with all the information and not one time did they say V8 engine. I know that's probably enough for some of you to punch out right now and go straight to the comments and unleash fury, but do me a favor and wait for a minute before you do that. Make sure you hear all of the details, starting with the horsepower. The base Charger Daytona RT will make 496 horsepower with a claimed zero to 60 time of 4.7 seconds. The much more powerful Scat Pack version will have 670 horsepower and a 3.3 second time to 60 and an 11.5 quarter mile time. As for the combustion car, it will make 420 horsepower to start and the high output version will have 550 down the line. Folks, this is Dodge. Of course, there will be more powerful versions to come. Dodge CEO Tim Kaniskis hinted at up to nine different versions of the EV, and even more when you consider the engines. The new Charger's highest output versions will be all electric. I bring up the CEO because he was cracking me up during the presentation yesterday. He said, quote, we could have made a melted jelly bean like everybody else, but we didn't. And then he went on to say that every decision we made for this car hurts efficiency. Could you just imagine somebody from Honda or Mercedes talking like that? They would burn their companies to the ground with those kinds of words. So here's your not melted jelly bean. To me, it looks fantastic. It looks a lot like the previous generation Challenger, but with a much more modern twist. By the way, this is not called Challenger. They're sticking with the Charger name. We asked why they're not calling it Challenger, and they said, don't worry, we own that name. We're gonna keep it in the drawer. And we just might bring it back in the future. So big question mark there. Let's start at the front of the car though. It's big, you can tell just how wide and imposing it is right away. One of my favorite things right here is the R-Wing design. That's not only a callback to previous generation Dodges, but it's also functional. This is part of the aerodynamics in this car that just make a lot of sense. <laughs> I gotta admit, it's a little hard for my brain to compute what I'm looking at right now because I'm talking about an electric vehicle, but I'm looking at wheels and tires that don't make sense for something that's electric. This is the Scat Pack that comes with the additional wheel and tire package. 305s at the front and 325s at the rear. They're huge. And speaking of 16 inch brakes, the biggest that Dodge has ever put on a car. Six piston at the front, four piston brakes at the rear. You're gonna need some serious stopping power because this car weighs just under 5,900 pounds. That's gonna be a lot to slow down on a drag strip. Every new Charger is gonna come standard with all wheel drive. Now Dodge says on the combustion car that comes next year, you'll be able to send all of the power to the rear axle. They haven't given all the details yet on the electric vehicle, but they said you will be able to vector the torque between all four wheels as necessary. We're hoping that means you can send all of it to the rear. Speaking of the rear, let's go this way because there are two things that I wanna point out, starting with the exhaust. No, you're not crazy. Yes, I said exhaust. Yes, this is an electric car. Come real close because right underneath, we have two areas where the traditional exhaust would go in its place. We have the next best thing, I guess. It's called Fratzonic. It's kind of a funny word, but it is meant to emulate an engine noise on the road. Dodge says it's gonna be louder than a modern Hellcat. We'll have to see about that. They can't demo it right now because they're still tuning it, but they showed this on the concept car last year and it set the internet ablaze. Speaking of that, let's open this up because this caught me off guard yesterday. The new Charger is a hatchback, so it's actually a much more practical design. They said you can throw an extra set of wheel of tires in the back here if you wanna go do a track day. Just thought this was kind of interesting. And here's your closer look at the four-door Charger. Unfortunately, it's a very early prototype, so we couldn't open it up but it shares the same hatchback design as the coupe and the same powertrain options, obviously just with better space for extra passengers. It will go on sale following the coupe later this year. This is an area where the Charger 
really needed some love because the current gen car, the interior looks at home in a Hertz parking lot and that's about it. But they have made things much, much better. We have a standard 12.3 inch center touchscreen. It has wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. It's running Uconnect 5, which is generally some really nice software as well. And right in front of me, we have digital gauges. All chargers are gonna come with new digital gauges. This one is the optional 16 inch panel. Looks super sharp. But please direct your eyes to the new steering wheel and specifically this area right here. On the right is a button labeled Power Shot. That's gonna give you an extra 40 horsepower for up to 15 seconds for you to win all of your red light races. And then over here is the drive mode selector, which has two new modes, including drift mode and donut mode. <sighs> if you were in an empty Walmart parking lot or the exit of a Cars and Coffee, watch out. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about all of the EV stuff. So if you actually listened to me and waited to leave your hate comment on not having a V8, thank you very much for your patience. You may now fly free to the comments. But the EV architecture here is actually pretty interesting. Both the RT and the Scat Pack are gonna be running on 400 volt architecture, which feels a bit like yesterday's technology. That said, the upcoming higher output models, like the Banshee, for example, that will have a much more sophisticated 800 volt architecture. The range caught me off guard, and that's because nothing about this car was designed for efficiency. The RT, the entry level charger, is gonna be good for 317 miles, and the Scat Pack is gonna be good for 260 miles. Not bad overall. The battery pack is actually pretty big. It's roughly 100 kilowatt hours. The charging speeds are eh, middle of the road when you consider everything. It's five to 80% in just over a half hour. I'll be really excited to see this car compete in the Edmunds EV charging test eventually. So this marks a huge change, not only for Dodge, but for the Charger. And of course, not everybody is going to be on board. That was never gonna be the case with how much they've put in place with this new car. My worry is that I'm not sure this speaks to traditional muscle car people, and I'm also not sure that this speaks to EV people. And if that's true, then who is this car for? Is it for you? What are you most excited about with the new Dodge Charger? We wanna hear from you in the comments. Let us know. And as always, thanks for watching.